So proudly, I walked over to these two people. I said, hey, excuse me, where are you from? And you know what they said to me? Hey guys, welcome back. In this week's episode, we tell you of the insane, crazy story of why we spent six weeks traveling in Asia trying to find a Bulgarian. Before we jump into this week's podcast, I just want to offer you guys a tiny little bit of context before we get into the story. So back when me, Tom and Dom were traveling in Asia, Tom, who lives in Bulgaria, mentioned that he had never found another Bulgarian while traveling. So Tom one night decided to issue Tom a crazy challenge. He said, if you find a Bulgarian while we travel together, I will give you 1,000 Thai baht, which is the equivalent of 30 US dollars. So Tom took him up on that crazy challenge. And for the next six weeks, we tried to find a Bulgarian person in Asia. So let's roll the intro and get into part two of this crazy, crazy story. So you guys can find out if we ever found a Bulgarian. Hello and welcome back to Backpacking Around, the budget travel podcast. My name is Tommy V. Joining me as ever is the man with a hat. It's Elliot Noble. Hello, Tom. And the lady with the earrings. It's Gabriella Sigler. Hi, guys. And our special guest, the man who cuts his own hair. Yes, (laughs) believe it, baby. It's Dominic Alford. (laughs) Hello, Tom. (laughs) So if you haven't watched part one, go back, check that out. Uh, It's all about my epic adventure, epic challenge, trying to find a Bulgarian in Asia. And last time we were left in Vang Vieng, the party town of Laos. Dom and I, we we were there, we were having a great time. We were having happy hour in the the hostel where we had free whiskey and vodka. I use those terms very lightly. It was the homemade Lao whiskey, right? It was dreadful. Yeah, it was not good. (laughs) So we had a great time in Vang Vieng. We went tubing. Um, which has been tamed down. In the past, people would be doing all sorts of stuff on, on the tubing. Uh, you get in a rubber tube and you float down the river, you go to bars. For us, it was, yeah, we went to two bars. Apparently, there used to be 12 bars. But, um, yeah, there was only two. And what was the three? Two, I think. Wait, re- mm. wait, in the whole town? No, in the tubing. Oh, okay, okay. I was like... There were more than three bars in Bang Bing. Um, which was kind of disappointing. Didn't meet any Bulgarians tubing. Did meet a Serbian. Getting close. Yeah. Oh, I felt like, okay, this is, this is, this is a good sign. Uh, but we went to a few bars uh, during the evenings, but unfortunately there were no Bulgarians. And we left, we mm. left Bang Bing empty-handed, Bulgarianless. <laughs> Went down to Vientiane, the capital of Laos, which, to be quite frank, I thought was pretty boring. Yeah, it was Laos Day when we were there as well, so nothing was even open. But there wasn't much there anyway, I don't think, really. So we pretty quickly got up and left, went down to the train station. And um, I remember very distinctly our bus, the train station broke down on the way. Excellent sign. Got on the train and we, we had a train to Bangkok. It was an overnight train. And there were two things that stopped us from being able to sleep on this overnight train. One, the lights on the train were right above us and they didn't turn off all night. So all night long, we just had lights going. And the second was a very rude man who was snoring. Oh, he was the loudest snorer I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Me and Tom were trying to wake him up at one point. <laughs> It worked temporarily, and then he fell back asleep again. (laughs) I'm not having this. I did not try and wake him up. I tried to wake him up. He he was the loudest. Literally, the whole carriage, it was all you could hear. It was a nightmare. He he was older. I think he was like probably in his 50s or something like that. But I dropped a coin behind his bed, and it (laughs) made a bit of a racket. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> worked for about five minutes and then he <laughs> fell asleep again he probably woke up and was like where's all this money coming from <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. anyway we got to bangkok and we were fucking groggy that morning um we had a coffee we had some breakfast and then we jumped on a bus straight to Siem reap um i mean we loved we loved thailand but we wanted to get to cambodia and reunite with uh, elliot and our friend tia who was also there 
So we got on this bus, we arrived in Siem Reap and uh, went to our hostel. And it was a nice little hostel. It was like a dollar a night or something. It was dirt cheap. Mm. Oh, yeah, we had those little <laughs> triangle like sheds mm. for about a dollar or two. They were really good, yeah. Where in Cambodia? Siem Reap. Siem Reap. Mm. Yeah. And what do you do in Siem Reap? Well, the big attraction is obviously Angkor Wat and drinking. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was going for the cultural arts, Gabby, but fine. We'll no, you know, actually, I, you know, I stayed at the Mad Monkey Hostel in Siem Reap and that shit goes hard. Oh my gosh. I mean, anyway. I've heard stories, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we, we, we met people who stayed in Mad Monkey and they'd like wake you, would they wake you with shots at like 11 o'clock and stuff? Oh, we would just join the beach party upstairs because I stayed at the one in Phnom Penh and the one in Siem Reap and um, it was a good time. Yeah. It was a good time. So we were we were walking around Angkor Wat, myself and Dom. We had a tour guide as well. And obviously, what do you do in a big tourist attraction when you've got a challenge like trying to find a Bulgarian? You don't listen to your tour guide. You listen out to see if anybody is speaking in a slightly Slavic language. <laughs> and at one point, just after we'd taken a beautiful photo um, of ourselves, I heard somebody speaking in something that sounded a bit like Bulgarian. And I thought, oh my God, is this it? Is this the moment? So proudly I walked over to these two people. I said, hey, excuse me, where are you from? And I said, ah, oh, you probably think we're Russian. It's like, no, I don't. I think you might be Bulgarian. <laughs> and you know what they said to me? No, we're Croatian. <laughs> so what did we do we drank your sorrows away uh we did that as well yes um <laughs> we went down to pub street which is a rather famous part of cm reap for debaucherous tourists Activities. yeah yeah so we went down there and i think it was actually this very t-shirt i got some white chalk or, or something and i wrote <laughs> oh yeah in bulgarian are you from Bulgaria? Ot Bulgaria DC is what they say in Bulgarian. So I wrote this on my t-shirt, front and back, just walking down the street, hoping somebody would tap me on the shoulder, be like, hey, I am Bulgarian, what's up? And then I could show this Bulgarian to Dom and be like, right, pay up, bitch. <laughs> it didn't happen. I think uh, we should also mention, most times when we would go up to people across our trip asking them, are they Bulgarian? They would obviously go no, and then their common question would be, "Why are you looking for a Bulgarian?" So as the trip went on, we were continually having to explain the whole tra travel challenge to these people, which got really tiring towards the end because you'd have to like explain what was going on. You know, what we should we should have just made a podcast back then and told them to watch that. That yeah. would have solved all our problems. Yeah. Oh yeah, and like literally moment like place by place, we continued and like kept everyone like yeah. yeah. Anyway, we went down to Phnom Penh. And for some reason, Elliot and Tia got a bus slightly earlier than myself and Dom. And I remember getting a text from you, Elliot. Do you remember it? I, I don't remember how we went to Phnom Penh, to be honest. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Elliot doesn't remember much, apparently, from the story. <laughs> so I got a text from Elliot saying, Hi, mate. The guy working in the hostel, I think, might be Bulgarian. Do you want me to ask? Oh, yes. And I was like, no, wait, we've all got to be there for it. So we rock up at the hostel, we do the check-in, here's our passport. I don't have a Bulgarian passport. That would have been a lot more exciting if I'd had one. Hand it over and he checks us in. He's like, okay, so your room's over there. We get our bags, we go like this. Like, oh, by the way, are you Bulgarian? <laughs> and he goes, no. Why do you think I'm Bulgarian? <laughs> Like, oh no, you just, you just you might be. Well, I lived in Bulgaria for five years, but I'm actually Turkish. What? But then so became a huge moment where he we at this stage we were beginning to lose hope, as you can tell. Dom and Tom had been trying in Lao over you know weeks trying to find a Bulgarian, and then he says this. Well, he just turns to us and says, after hearing the story. Where are you going next? And we say, well, we're planning to go to Korong or Korong San Uem. Ah, 
I believe there is a Bulgarian who lives <laughs> on Co Rock. <laughs> and I'm like, big really? hip off. <laughs> what's his name? Where does he work? And so he writes it down, like in some sort of like detective novel on a little scrap of paper. I put it in my pocket and keep it safe. The thing is, we only had about a week left of our trip. Yeah. So we were right at the end, our last chance to find a Bulgarian. I think Dom was getting more confident as the trip went on that he would not have to hand over the 1,000 baht. I thought my money was safe. I really did. (laughs) (laughs) I thought there was no chance. (laughs) Well, we we had a really nice time in Phnom Penh. A lot of people put it down, but uh, we found a nice little place for breakfast that we went to every morning. And we got a tuk-tuk driver who we, uh, we hired him for the day. And we, we, we wanted to go go-karting because this was something which we'd all sort of had a, an interest in doing at some point. And he took us to the go-kart track that we'd found online and it was abandoned. There was no one there. There were just one or two dilapidated go-karts left. And cows. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> cows, which is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so as we were about to leave, we were like, go on, do you want to have a go around the track? So we just got him to go around the track on his tuk-tuk. Yeah. We were like, as he was driving, like heading out, we were like, no, 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 go, go, go. And he took us around the track at full speed in his tuk-tuk. And the smile on his face, he was also having the time of his life, as were we. And it was just one of those incredible experiences. We wish we had we had documented for, yeah. you know, you guys. Um, but then we went to the actual go-karting place. And that was incredible. It was. We had a lot of fun. Um, Tia and I were absolutely dreadful. Elliot and Don were bombing it around. Um, but as with all things, our time in, um, in Phnom Penh came to an end and we went down to Korong. And the excitement was palpable. I was so buzzed to meet oh, this Bulgarian. Yeah. So we get down to this tiny little place, <clears throat> Sikhanusville or whatever it's called. It's dodgy area you get the ferry from to go to go wrong we get to go wrong we get off we're walking to a hostel and i see the bar the bar where this bulgarian is allegedly working should we, should we go in now guys no let's go later when we've had a few drinks all right so we get to our hostel we put our bags down i think we're all sharing a room together yep. um it was two double beds and a single bed and there were four of us and we decided that the way to uh designate who would sleep in which bed was we were kind of play a game of Perudo, which if you've never played, it's a great little dice game. And while we were playing this game of Perudo, some people walked in and we obviously had to ask them, are you Bulgarian? They had a strange accent, okay? They were actually from New Zealand. Um, similar, similar. Very similar, yes. Very similar cultures as well. Mm. Um, but eventually we decided it was time to go and meet our Bulgarian, called Atanas. That's what we've been told. So we rock up to the bar and we ask someone working there, is Atanas here? And they're like, yes. (gasps) Oh, so much excitement. (laughs) And so they beckon us to come upstairs, almost as if we were meeting the mafia boss. Yeah, (laughs) this highly anticipated meeting. (laughs) We go up the stairs. And it's an empty room with some table tennis tables. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously they had misunderstood what we'd said. And instead of thinking Atanas the Bulgarian, they thought table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> so Atanas was not there. We went around to a few other bars trying to find him. And by this point, I think every word had got round the island that this random group of people were looking for that. Because yeah. some no... people greeted us with like a, a strange intrigue. They were like, why are you? And also across the few days, we have <clears throat> revisited the main bar because people knew Atanas. They knew this guy Atanas. But for some reason, he was never in the bar at the time. And we would have to like buy a beer. And But people were kind of getting more like, why are you trying to find Atanas? And it came to our final night. On Koron. In fact, it was one of our final nights together. We were planning to go back to Bangkok and then fly out. And so we had to find him. And we went to every single bar along the beach that night. And of course, 
We went to every single bar and got to the final one at the end of the beach. And it was dead empty. I see someone standing at the top of the stairs. I go up. Excuse me, are you a Tanas? And he says, no, you asked me this last <laughs> night. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. <laughs> and he says, Atanas is over here. I'll go get him. He steps out. And I ask that question, the most important question, are you from Bulgaria? And he says, da. And we go crazy. <laughs> Genuinely, I think he was terrified. We started jumping up and down in the bar with excitement six weeks across three countries searching for this one man <laughs> after after hundreds of times hundreds asking are you bulgarian and being rebuffed being told no being told what the fuck is wrong with you asking this question oh, <laughs> we finally God. found a bulgarian and and what what did we do to celebrate we sat down and we we enjoyed a couple of beers in this bar and it was like the end of a chapter uh, of, it, our it, of our time together and it was incredible I mean it was a perfect conclusion to our trip um, because unfortunately after that Elliot got food poisoning and wasn't oh. able to Bangkok with us this is a story for another day but, um, but yeah. so, so what the hell did this guy say did he ask you any questions or he was just like these fuckers <laughs> well, he had something to he say terrified yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he was afraid right okay you want a beer yeah. that was it it was very anticlimactic. He also he also had heard through the grapevine that there was three people looking for him. So he was quite he was already, you know, worried about this, like that there were people continually asking in bars for him. So he was worrying, who are these people looking for me? So I think it was like half a relief for him to know that, oh, it's only these, these yeah. weirdos looking for him. <laughs> I remember telling one barmaid that Tom was like a massive, huge, well-built guy who was looking for him. <laughs> probably didn't help, man. <laughs> so the funny thing is, after this, I flew out to Australia and I spent a week in Australia seeing some family. And on my first day there, I went to the supermarket just to get some groceries. And I overhear two people having a conversation in Bulgarian. And I was like, seriously, I've been looking for you for months. <laughs> you buses <laughs> popping up twice at a time. So yeah, that's the end of our epic adventure, epic challenge of finding a Bulgarian in Asia. We really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel because Hopefully soon we're going to go traveling and do some crazy challenges. Fingers crossed. If you liked it as well, leave us a like. Give us a comment if you've ever had some crazy experience meeting random people while you've traveled. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We really hope you enjoyed hearing this story as we did finding the Bulgarian, um, if that's even possible. Uh, we want to say a massive thank you to the one and only Dominic Halford for joining us again. Thank you, Dom. Anytime. And stay tuned, guys. We have some more fantastic stories coming. As Tom said, we are hoping to get back out on the road soon. So fingers crossed you will be seeing travel content coming from us. Thank you and see you next time. All right, guys. In last week's episode, we got a crazy comment from a Bulgarian. Uh, he told us his epic story of finding a Bulgarian in the Seychelles. So if you want to go back, read the comment section of the last video and his Bulgarian story might even be more epic than ours. Also guys, if you enjoyed this week's episode, please be sure to like, subscribe and comment. It would really help us out.